what you believe about the rapture matters. And before y'all want to throw Matthew 24 in the comments, let me save you some time and help you out with that. Many of you that quote Matthew 24 is simply because you don't realize the group of people that are involved in that passage. Jesus is addressing the Jews in that passage about the time of the end and giving them instruction on how to escape it. Context is everything when studying the Bible. And that passage just is not referring to Christians living in the church age today. Okay? So, moving on. First of all, the rapture is not just some false doctrine made up by some guy named John Darby. The rapture was revealed to Paul by God and written in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians around about the time of 49 to 51 AD. And here is why you don't find the word rapture in the Bible. Because in the original Greek text, the word is harpazo, which means to seize upon, snatch away, take by force, caught up. And the Latin translation of that word is rapturo. And from there, the English translation of the word rapturo is rapture. But the English translation doesn't use rapture, it uses the definition of that, which is caught up. And so in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, that is what you see. You see the phrase caught up. Let's read that verse. It says, after that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Wow. Isn't that great? Like, why wouldn't anybody be excited about that? The rapture is called the blessed hope for the born again believer. And aside from our salvation, this is the greatest thing we could ever hope for or look forward to. Let me tell you something. The more you get to know God, the less you will want this world. And the more you will realize what he said was true, that this is just a temporary home for us. We were not meant for this home. And let me tell you something. This world could completely go back to normal. I could retire from my job, have all kinds of wealth, and be living on an island somewhere in paradise. And I still want out of here. And so if you don't believe in this promise of God, or that it's post-tribulation, that it's going to happen at the end of the tribulation, then what is your hope? Is your hope that you may store up enough food and enough shelter, enough armor to fight the Antichrist? Where's the hope in that? No one is going to survive the Antichrist. So even if you survive all the judgments being poured out upon the earth and man, you definitely won't survive the Antichrist. So listen to me. If you are not a believer right now, you will die. In fact, if you're not a believer, you will die twice. The first death will be a physical death, and the second death will be the lake of fire. The second death is a reference to the lake of fire where people who are separated from God by their sin will dwell for eternity. And if you do become a believer in the tribulation, your fate lies in the hands of the Antichrist who will behead you for your faith. That's not my words. That's in Revelation 20, verse 4. Let's read it together. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So you will be beheaded for your faith. So here's a question for you. If the fate of the believer during the tribulation is to die by beheading, who will be left to be raptured at the end? Okay, sorry, I already know the answer to that question. The answer is no one. And yes, every generation since Paul believed that they would see the rapture. But Jesus was clear about the generation he was referring to was in the future. The generation that would see 
These things that Jesus spoke of in the end times come to pass. And Jesus said that these things would come quickly and that when we do see them, we would know that the time is at the door. Look around you. Do you not see that we are in the time of the end? The promise of the rapture is called the blessed hope and it's for every born again believer. And if you're a Christian and that does not excite you, then you are not ready. You are not ready to give up the things of this world. Let me read James 4, 4 to you. It says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. So no, the church is not meant for the 21 judgments of the time of Jacob's trouble, which means Israel's trouble, not the church's trouble. That entire seven year period is all of God's wrath. It is 21 judgments that gets kicked off by the one true living God, Jesus Christ himself, takes the scroll and opens up the first seal and the judgments intensify the seven seals to the seven trumpets to the seven bulls of wrath. And if you ask me, one quarter of the population that's going to die in the first four seals, that sounds like some pretty harsh wrath already. So I can't imagine how much harsher it gets. I want to read 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 to you. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Who is us? Us is referring to the born again believer the saved. God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Boom! There it is. You can't get any more clearer than that. You will not be punished by being put through seven years of wrath. Why? Because your sins were punished on the cross. Jesus took your punishment on the cross for you already and the seven-year tribulation is wrath stored up for the wicked and for the rebellious nation of israel to lead the jews back to their one true messiah jesus christ friends he is coming back for us just like he promised in john 14. we are about to pass through the tape that's on the finish line and into the winner's circle and there is laid up for those people who loved his appearing a crown of righteousness. That's in 2 Timothy 4, 8. And for those of you that are watching and waiting and longing in complete excitement for his appearing, there is a crown of righteousness stored up for you. And scoffers, you can come scoff all you want, but you cannot steal our crown.